morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Such a glorious day to be in the Lord's house. Can I get amen? Amen. 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 Uh, we don't know how fortunate we are to have this opportunity to be here to sing songs of praises amen. Amen. and to study God's holy word. Amen. And like that song that we just listened to beforehand, how he loves us. He loves us so much, He gave us His only begotten Son. Amen. Amen. That we might have a chance at life. Because, you know what, with Jesus Christ, that's the only chance we got. Amen. Uh, the lesson of the hour is going to come. I've done this before, but you know what, we're going to do it again. Acts chapter 9. I don't know how long it's been since I did this one, but we're going to do it again. And... Uh, we all know the Bible is like an onion. Yep. You keep pulling it back in layers. Each and every time you read a subject or something, guess what? You're going to learn something new from that same passage that is through God's inspiration. Amen. Because every book in this Bible is written through God's inspiration. But we're going to learn about Paul's road to Damascus. And how our road that we're walking today is kind of like Paul's road to Damascus. Amen. Now, he was going to Damascus. What was he going to do? He was going to go persecute the church there. He, he'd already held the coast of the men that stoned Stephen, one of God's beloved prophets. He held it, let it happen, go on. And yet, on that road to Damascus, as we shall see here in Acts chapter 9, the Lord Jesus came to him and struck him down. Amen. And folks, what's going on today? The Lord is not striking us down, is he not? Amen. Yeah, he is. Why? Because of us as a people, as his children, we're like Paul here, which at that time was Saul, excuse me. I'm going to speak as, as Saul first. He was dismantling the churches everywhere he went. And us, as people today, are dismantling God's churches Amen. by letting all manner of evil prevail over the manner of love that we have been shown through the, uh, through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ to have our forgiveness of sins. Amen. And you're going to see here where Saul was hard-headed and what he was doing. He thought he was doing right, folks. He really did. He thought he was doing right, but he wasn't doing right. And and the Lord tells him, you know, he's going to tell him. But let's go ahead and get God's word here. Before I get started, let us have a word of prayer right quick. Father, we come to you today thankful for all the many blessings. Father, we're thankful for this, your word, that you have given us to have for examples and guidelines of to live the life that you would have us to live, Father. Father, uh, we just ask you to speak through me, Father, and I ask you to release your Holy Spirit in this building today, to release your Holy Spirit upon the audience, to seal their minds and seal their hearts with your great truth and great love. It's in Jesus' name I ask this. Amen. 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 All right, in chapter 9, uh, Paul is converted on his way to Damascus to do the very thing we was just discussing. Verse 1, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogue that if he found any of this, of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And we'll go on to read here, and that light from heaven was so bright that it blinded him. Amen. Guess what? Guess what, folks? That light shining around us today, blinding us from all the things that are going into the media, is what's being used to blind you today. Amen. It's being used to deliver you away from the way that we should be going. 
And it just so happens that that day on the road to Damascus, Saul ran into the way he should have went and that he should go. Mm-hmm. He really did. Uh, I had a friend tell me one time that Paul never met, met Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, see, that's just a part of what I'm telling you is going on in the world today. They're trying to blind us. Guess what? He met him, and you're going to find out right here that he met him pretty seriously. Uh, in verse 3, uh, no, excuse me. Yeah, verse 3, excuse me. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Now that light there in here today might be that little nudge on your shirt tail that you feel, or that little nudge in your stomach that you feel. God's calling each and every one of us that are here today. He's calling us. He's calling you. Do you hear him calling? Amen. Have you been still and listening for that calling? Because guess what? I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, his calling is very loud and very clear. And it shined about him like a light from heaven. In verse 4 he said, And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? He was just just so fervent in what he was doing, going against the Lord, what the actual Lord needed him to do in persecuting his church. Even he realized when that call was made to him by Jesus Christ, even he realized that was the Lord. That was the Lord. Guess what, folks? He's calling us today. He still called. In verse 5, he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, kicking against the pricks here. I know I shared this with my brother the other day. But in the middle of the night, you're walking around blindly. Ow! Ow! It hurts. Why would we keep kicking against the prick? Does it not hurt to stub your toe? Guess what? Kicking against that prick, disobeying God's word, is like stubbing your toe 150,000 times worse. Because guess what? The promises throughout this Bible for you to love the Lord and to do His work far outnumber the good. The good in that far outnumber the bad. I'm not saying, folks, it's going to be easy. I promise you it's not. Because when you start kicking against the pricks and finally answer the Lord, guess what? You've got somebody's attention. And that's somebody saying, I hate giving him credit, and I know I give him a lot of credit at times, but guess what? He's good, folks. Mm-hmm. He is. He's good. He's not as good as Jesus, though. He's not as good as God, though. Nowhere near that. But he's a lot better than us, unfortunately. And us as humans, we're known to err. And we're going to fall short. But the thing here that really impressed me about Saul, he figured that out, quit kicking against the pricks. He done what the Lord told him to do. He done what he told him to do. He went into town, as we'll read on here, uh, verse 6, and he trembling and astonished, astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Now, if you feel that calling, and you just don't know what to do, it's kind of confusing you. Stop for a second. Take this as Saul as an example of what to do. He fell to his knees. Of course, he was blinded and caused to, but he fell to his knees. And he listened to what Jesus Christ had to tell him. Jesus said, Arise and go, and there it shall be given unto you what you need to do. If you're having problems with figuring out what that gut feeling is the Lord's putting on you, stop and pray. He will answer your prayers. Because guess what? You're wanting to seek Him. And if you're wanting to seek the Father and seek Jesus Christ, just like He told us all here, it shall be told to you what you must do. 
that means it's going to send you to a person that's going to be able to direct you in the path that you should go. Into the path that is right. The path of righteousness. Verse 7. And then men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into, into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did he eat nor drink. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and told him, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. I really like that verse here. It says a disciple called Ananias, the Lord called for him. He said, Lord, I'm here. I want to tell you right now, I want to tell the Lord I'm here right now. I want you to tell the Lord I'm here right now. Amen. I urge you and want you desperately to tell the Lord that in your heart, in your mind. Why? Because look at Paul's credentials after he made the conversion to Paul. Look at the books that he wrote to the churches worldwide. He wrote them to us as well. As things that we are dealing with today that they were dealing with back then. Uh, I mean, I know I wasn't there back then, but I do know one thing, it was bad. But folks, the evidence of what was bad back then and what's bad now has gotten far worse. Amen. Folks, it's time for us to heed that calling. I'm not judging no man. I'm not judging no woman. I'm not judging one person. We need to truly sit down and heed that calling that we're called to do. Whether it is to be go out and give somebody a smile that's frowning, that's had a bad day. Whether it be somebody hungry for God's Word, to guide them in God's Word where they need to be. Whether it's somebody that's having problems with anxiety, to show them the love that God has for them. To show them the love that you have for them. Because guess what? Each and every one of you that are here, I love you. And there's no greater thing than I could think of to share the love of God with you. And I don't care what you've done. I don't care if you murdered somebody. I don't care if you if you smoked dope all your life. I don't care if you popped pills all your life. There's a point in that road that you're going to be called to step away from that and be the true calling of what you're called to do. Amen. Folks, that time is now. God is pleading with us now to turn away from these things, to turn away from worldly things, to turn unto Him and the things that are good, the things that are righteous, the things that are pure, the things that are lovely. Because why? Because He showed us first. Even as sinners, He showed us how much love He has for us. Because guess what? When we are yet still but sinners, He gave His life for us. Because you know what? We're nowhere near worthy to be able to approach that throne without Him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We are nowhere near worthy of that. So Jesus came to this earth, taught God's will, and they put him to death for that. Has anybody put you to death yet for teaching God's will? No. Now I ain't saying that it might come and it might come to that. Amen. That's what I told you earlier. It's not always going to be easy. But it's going to be easy if you spend time with the Father. And how do you spend time with the Father? Get this Bible. Stay Amen. in it. Study it. Amen. Front to back, back to front, through and over and over again. Each and every time you open this up, you'll find something different. And right, let's continue back with God's word here. And the Lord said unto him, in verse 11, excuse me. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And he had seen in the vision 
a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Now this receiving his sight here is receiving the sight of what God wanted. Amen. Not, not, what, not what the uh, big wigs of the religious system back then wanted, but what God actually wanted. Because in the big wigs back then, they were putting the church of Christ, the Christians down, the ones that follow Christians, putting them in jail, beating them, even killing them. But he received his sight by a disciple that was willing to do what God told him to do. Now, if you've got somebody in your family, I'm not talking about physically blind, I'm talking about mentally blind, heart, heart being blind, God's calling you today. He's calling you today to help them receive their sight. But we can't do it ourselves. We cannot do it ourselves. We have to put it in the Lord's hand. And the Lord's hand will be there to mediate with us with the Father. And guess what? When the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit get on something, <laughs> stuff happens. Mountains move. Mountains crumble out of your way. That's the only way, folks. You wonder why this world is like it is now? It's because we've not totally seeked Him to receive our sight. <laughs> Folks, I urge you, seek the Lord and receive your sight because things become more beautiful. Things become so much easier when you got the Lord on your side. You're walking through that fire today. Open your eyes and open your hearts to the Word of God because that fire is nothing compared to the fire of the Lord and the Holy Spirit and God. It's not. Because you know why? Because they go with you. They are there with you. Folks, it's time for us to stand on God's Word. If Paul can do it, someone that was going out helping murder God's people, why can't you do it? Amen. I'm laying down a challenge to you right now. Why can't you do it? Why can't you adhere to to God's word and adhere to God's way and to adhere to the love God has for us because the world's trying to blind us who's of the world? that's right, Satan the world's trying to blind us guess what? this pestilence we've been having Brother Jimmy's been doing many studies on that and I look forward to many more studies on that and guess what? it's in the Bible it's in the Bible. It tells you what's going to happen if God's people turn their way from Him. It tells you that we're going to endure this. And the only way that we can be saved through this all is to fall upon your knees and ask the Lord to go with you. Amen. To honestly, diligently search for Him. Seek Him. And you shall find Him. Then Ananias said, answered, verse 13 here, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, now listen here, the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. That call goes for you, 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 you. All those out on, on the internet that's getting to watch this when they get to watch it, if they do, he's calling on you. How do I know he's calling on you? Because guess what? You're here. You're diligently searching God's faith and searching for God's favor. You're searching for His help. He will freely give that to you as long as you answer His call. Don't be like the man that got received one talent. Took that talent over here and dug a hole and covered it up and didn't use it. Amen. Be like the one that got five, 
about five more on top of that. And what happened when he brought them extra ones? But this one slothful and lazy, lazy servant over here buried the one that he was given. He got it taken away from him and got it given to the one that doubled what he did. You hear it? He got double the talents that he had. To much is given, much is expected. You are given the Word of God freely. You are given us godly people, His children, that have understanding of the Bible, you're given that freely. It's your choice whether to use that talent or to let it go to waste. My question for you today, what is your choice? I know the choice of the people in this building here today. I know what their choice is. No doubt about it. Why? Right? Because you're here. Because I see, I, I see you sharing God's Word daily. I see you meditating upon the things that He wants us to meditate upon. And I want y'all to I want y'all to meditate upon the happenings here, the profound happenings here of what was going on. I don't care what your past is. I love you. I know what your future can be. I love you. I know what my future is going to hold. My future is going to hold God. And, and I urge you, you as well, I urge you that your future to hold God. Because I know if your future holds God, there's somebody else that's hungry for God's Word, hungry for God's love, you're going to share it. Why? Because you have obedience to the commands God has given you. And that's one of His commands, to spread the Gospel. And I could go on in this chapter, but I kind of made my point through God's will today. I want you to know, folks, forgiveness is just a prayer away. Amen. It's just a prayer away. If you need that forgiveness, it's available for you freely today. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, praise God. It's freely available to you because you love the Lord. You've heard a portion of His will. You've heard an example of how a bad person can be brought over to the good side. We need to do more of that, folks. We need to apply ourselves more, myself included. I've been slacking a little bit. I try not to, but I've been slacking a little bit. I'm going to make better on that. Why? Because I love my Lord. I love my God. And I hope you love Him too. He's calling you. Answer that call today. And go from here to here. You're going to be attempted to be knocked off at. But guess what? Might knock you off, but Jesus Christ is right there with His hands stretched out. Saying, get up, my son. Reclaim the place where I put you. And go further. Folks, if we want to change something in this world, we're going to have to hold to our, our roots here. I don't know about you. This is my roots right here. Amen. My roots go through this from page to page. Page to page. Page after page. That's where my roots are. And I challenge you for your roots to be there as well. I'm by no means a saint, folks. But I love my God. Amen. I try my best. And I know Jesus Christ died for me. I know He died for you. Why not give your life to Him? And let the true power of God's Word unlock everything that you need, everything that you want, as long as it's according to God's will, everything that you want. If you don't want to be down there no more, give it to God. If you don't want to be hurting people no more, give it to God. Because guess what? If you seek Him daily, you love Him. And He said, if you love me, I will be there for you. Amen. Today's the day of salvation, folks. I don't know if you know it or not, but it is it is coming quickly. Today's the day of salvation. You might not get another opportunity 
after this very moment to realize what your calling is. <coughs> if you go against that gut feeling, that little tug you have on your shoulder, if you go against that, you might not get another chance. I'm not trying to scare nobody into nothing, but you might not get another chance. And you hearing the Word of God, you know right from wrong. Amen. You're accountable. Folks, don't let that opportunity waste away. If you would, start playing the music, please. And if everybody would, please.